Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show, highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhood. And now, from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Um, Dorothy, we are uh, closing out September. Um, yes, we'll, October will be on us before we know it. Yeah, well, we have um, uh, a very distinguished panel to discuss um, a couple of issues, and they had actually been on two years ago. Um, you know, September is National Recovery Month, and it has been, and October is Substance Abuse Awareness Month. So we are timing the show actually right in the middle of the two events. And, you know, we're two days away from... Um, this um, presidential debate, we are inundated with information and issues yes, and topics. Are. And and then you go on social media, and then you are getting bombarded by the left, by the right. Everyone's got a cause. Not everybody has a reason, or a, uh, there's a lot of emotion out there. So sometimes um, things get lost in the translation, and fly. it kind of flies under the radar. Um, there's just so many issues, but I think today um, with our panel, we have an opportunity to discuss a pervasive issue yeah. and a problem that seems to, to grow every year in spite of uh, everybody's best efforts. And um, we're going to talk about some of those reasons why um, we're uh, we're going to be speaking uh, today for the whole show with um, Karen Wicker, who is the executive director of Drug Free Moore County. Um, we're going to be speaking with uh, Reuben Burney, um, who runs the Pinehurst Comprehensive Treatment Center. Um, and we're going to get a lot of their, um, their stories, um, updates as to what's going on in the county. And we're also going to be uh, speaking with uh, Dan and Jeff. Um, about AA. There are just so many different types of um, uh, problems with dependence. Um, Karen, it, good morning. Good morning. Um, it's been almost um, two years. I think we, you and Ruben were on about two years ago, and we were having a similar conversation. Um, right. Every September and every October, we have these events. Um, it, it's, it remains a pervasive um, issue, but your September is really about celebrating recovery and right. understanding addiction. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for letting us come back. I wish we we should have been back sooner. Um, yeah. I hate to say uh, the the issue of addiction and substance use uh, order, disorder is growing. Right. It's not going away. Right. Um, when we spoke to the uh, county commissioners a couple of weeks ago about. Um, signing our proclamation for National Recovery Month. Um, I thank them for sponsoring Drug Free Moore County for the past 20 years. And I said, well, I hate to tell you, we haven't gone out of business yet. Uh, business is growing, you know. Right. And, and I wish I could say we didn't have to have this organization. But um, but it is it is there. And But we are celebrating recovery. Mm -hmm. But as we do that, we try to help people understand what addiction or substance use disorder is because without under, that understanding and that awareness, mm -hmm. a lot of times we're not going to understand what recovery means mm -hmm. for folks. Um, and it, it, it's the hidden disease. You know, we were talking earlier about diabetes and cancer and heart disease. And a lot of folks know more about that, but they don't understand that this is the disease that nobody wants to talk about. So, so to a layman, when you say um, substance abuse, mm -hmm. do, does a layman think about uh, drugs and alcohol? Is that are those the two bellwethers that we're going to be discussing, or are there more? Uh, there are more, but right now, alcohol. Of course, alcohol is the number one abuse substance in in the United States, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's easily easy to get, and um, opiates. Uh, is the next mm -hmm. and uh, of course you put opiate slash heroin in that because heroin is growing um, and these two are the I, are the ones that are the most popular and uh, of course marijuana is still 
out there. And, of course, there's always the debate about legalizing it and not legalizing it. But um, those are probably the three most important substances as far as when we begin to talk about addiction and recovery. In, in, um, there are a couple of states, you just mentioned the mm -hmm. legality of marijuana. Right. A few states where it is legal. North Carolina is not one of them. Right. It's illegal here. Yeah, so we have to tell all our students that, you know, this is not Colorado. Exactly. Right. And they have yes. to live. They can't live like they're in Rocky Mountain High. Right. It's not Cal uh, yeah, Oregon or, or uh, Colorado. And they're having issues there where they legalized it. I mean, you yeah. know, and, and it's a different potency, too. It's a different type of uh, marijuana. But, um, of course, I'm sure probably some of it seeps here. So, uh, um, if I can just ask you a question. Okay. So I'm getting so tired of going on Facebook and reading about misinformation yes. where people have a point of view about this or that. So any typical morning you go on Facebook, just talk about marijuana for a second. Okay. You see an article, it says, um, it cures cancer. Mm -hmm. And then there's an, this article from some uh, remote think tank that writes this article and presents a point of view. It, it's the same thing with drugs, it's the same thing with alcohol. Uh, coffee. Everyone has a point. <laughs> There's so much information, and it, yes. it it skews the way we think. We don't know what to believe. Well, I think sometimes we want to. It's almost like I guess not to talk politics, but we believe what we want to believe. Right. And I think the same way with marijuana. And there's probably some components of marijuana or the the marijuana plant that do, it does have medical benefits. Sure. But just the normal, you know, marijuana that we roll up and smoke. I mean, there there are negative uh, benefits. I mean, not neg or benefits, but negative consequences to that. Right. Yes. Um, we, we've, um, in addition to you being on a couple of years ago, uh, Maureen Kruger was on. We talked about um, um, the doctor shopping. We right. Talked. The, the, what are the biggest um, um, talking points that you want to address today as far as the drug um, abuse goes? Is it identifying it? Is it treating it? Is it the methods that people um, abuse the system? So many questions. Uh, well, I think, well, for one example, I know doctor shopping is going down because there is more awareness and uh, more of the sheriff's department has been doing a really good job with that. Right. But also, um, I think when we talk about recovery and addiction, we really need to talk about availability of treatment, what's out there, how people can access it, and then also for family members to understand what is addiction and how can they actually help? How can they be the cheerleader for their person going through recovery? Um, or how can they be that parent that doesn't know, you know, that just finds out their their son is smoking marijuana, so what do I do now, you know? So I think we need to educate folks on, you know, what's available as far as treatment and what's not available and do something about that, but also um, understand addiction as a brain disease. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of parents that, that ask the question you just posed. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> my child is smoking marijuana. What do I do about it? Yeah. It's illegal. <laughs> that, that's, that's one, answer that's number one statement. One. Yeah, that's one statement a parent can make is not in not in my house, like not in my backyard. You I, know, I've heard that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, but also they can educate themselves on on. I mean, like you said, there's a lot on the internet. We have information through Drug Free Moore County as well on what is marijuana, how it does affect your brain, how it does affect your lungs, especially if you inhale it, um, and Parents just need to be aware. They don't need to close their eyes and, or put their head in the sand and say, well, my child won't do that, or it's not going to go any further than this. Because if you have the predisposition for addiction, and you begin smoking marijuana, and then you start drinking some alcohol, and then you start, well, maybe I'll take this, you, it becomes that brain disease. And, and as a parent, you need to be aware. You need to be that, um, be informed and be aware and take a stand with your child. So, is addiction of, of any nature, mm -hmm. is it a brain disease or is it a self-esteem issue at the, at the root? And, and, and uh, I might Ruben, get Ruben to kind of yeah, answer Ruben, that. He's Ruben my addiction Bernie is specialist. sitting here, yeah. um, the Pinehurst Comp Comprehensive Treatment Center. 
um, you've been listening attentively. Um, right. uh, is the addiction is it is it a chemical imbalance? I believe that uh, it's it's definitely a brain disease, but there are a lot of factors that also play into that. You know, it's just like they talk about the genetic component of it, but also there's the social component. Right. There's so many factors that influence that allow it to manifest, but. I have, a, for example, this paper from American Society for Addiction Medicine. It does a good example of basically uh, giving a, a great definition of what addiction is. Can I read it? Yeah, by all means. It says, addiction is a primary chronic neurobiologic disease with genetic, psychosocial, and environmental factors influencing its development and manifestations. It is characterized by behaviors that include one or more of the following, impaired control of a drug use, compulsive use, Continued use despite harm and craving. So I think that's it simplifies it. It gives like a, a definition, like dictionary, but it, it tells that it's a disease, but it affects the person's behavior. It affects the uh, their spiritual aspect, the whole entire person. Mm -hmm. And it's just not one component. And I think with the moral, oftentimes we mention about, sometimes society has this moral view of addiction. I went to a training uh, a few days ago in Raleigh, a two-day training, and they talked about sometime how the media uh, uses words like, why does a cocaine addict choose to use drugs? And not realizing that that person, once that their brain is impaired, they, have, mm -hmm. they no longer have a choice. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the wording oftentimes, and it's a stigma. So there's definitely a, a misunderstanding mm -hmm. out there about uh, people, will, some people will say, you just don't have the discipline. You can't right. stop it. And right. you're saying that sometimes you're not able to right. stop I, it. If, if, I just feel like if that was the case, I'd probably be out of job if it was just a, uh, <laughs> something that's willpower, you know, but we know that's not that simple. I, I've been a counsel probably like 20 years in New York in this area. And I've, I've had a patient who was a diabetic and was blind in one eye due to his diabetes, who was continuing to drink. And... Uh, his wife would say, well, why don't you stop? It's killing him. And he eventually died. And mm. But it was the insanity of the addiction. We know that the, it does hijack the brain addiction. Mm -hmm. It changes the brain and the thinking and all that. Mm -hmm. um, do you spend, um, do both of you, do you spend a lot of time educating people about this? Because I do think there are a lot of misunderstandings. We try, um, yeah. you know, through doing radio programs, um, interviews with some of the newspapers, also getting literature out. We have a resource catalog that uh, we have tried to get out through law enforcement and health fairs and different things that have information on there of how people can get help. And it also describes what substance use disorder is and then what treatment is. And But, you know, again, people have to be aware of it and they want to know more about it because we we've done I know I've done a um, panel before in a in a particular town and they're like not in our backyard you know I mean they just don't want to believe that it's here and I think until we break down that barrier people are not going to listen mm -hmm. you know um, a lot of times I'll have conversation with folks one on one and then they'll just say well gosh you know my son I'm having issues with my son or, or my husband or whatever, but out in public, they wouldn't say it, right. you know. So I think because it's such a secret disease, um, people don't want to have that information sometimes. Yeah, and we live in a world, uh, unfortunately, where it's, it's sometimes it's keeping up with the Joneses mm -hmm. and looking good, mm -hmm. and then you want to shuffle certain things down below underneath the shadows, so to speak. Right. Yeah. And, and, and just for example, just like uh, in the newspaper, we see pictures of people being arrested for substance use. Yeah. And there's the person all disheveled and looks bad, and, and the, you read the comment lines, and they're like, oh, well, you know, what are they doing? You know, they, they need to get a job or get, you know. You see the negative piece mm -hmm. of addiction. They right. don't see, because a lot of times we don't see the, the happy, wonderful faces of recovering, uh, long term recovery folks. Mm -hmm. And I think. That's what, we're missing. Yeah. That's what we're missing. I've had the opportunity to see some of the people recovering through the Bethany House. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's inspiring mm -hmm. when somebody can overcome, at least get themselves on the right mm -hmm. uh, foot and put themselves in a, a disciplined environment uh, because they do need support. Right. Family support, mm -hmm. 
and if the family is um, not supporting them, it's kind of hard for them to succeed. Right. right. Um, is your website still drugfreemorecounty.org? Yes, but really, but I think the, the uh, probably the most effective way is our Facebook page. We we really I update that a lot. The Drug Free More County Facebook page, okay. and that's more updated and has lots of information on there. And we're we're growing with our, I guess, our likes. <laughs> so uh, we're hopefully reaching more folks with that. So w tell me what people will see on the Facebook page that will help them, especially if they think they have someone, in, in a family member that might have a problem. Well, what I try to share a lot of times is what's going on nationally. You know, there's a facing addiction organization. There's the Addicts Mom, uh, which has a Facebook page, and they have a lot of inspirational things, as well as what new legislation is going on as far as national level. Um, uh, President Obama signed a, um, a drug um, initiative. initiative. There you go. Couldn't find the word. Uh, <laughs> not too long ago, but a lot of funding was going to law enforcement, but also to medicated assisted tr um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So some is, is trickling down, and then also what's going on, like in Fayetteville, they have a new program called LEAD, which their law enforcement are able to, at, at the scene, can see if someone needs help and will automatically try to get them into treatment before they even get into the uh, justice system. Yeah. So it, the initiatives are coming, and that's what you'll see on the Facebook page. What I try to do is just keep updating the information on what's going on out there as well as uh, sometimes I do a little narrative of my own and just try to say what's going on, especially with the Knox Salon, that um, there's a new state um, order the governor just signed that now – um, in North Carolina, we're one of the three states that you can get the overdose drug from uh, several different drug stores. Right now, the drug stores do not have those in place, but they will be getting those. So that will be updated on the Facebook page Narcan, as well. Narcan. Narcan. Mm -hmm. okay. Not Salon or Narcan. We're mm -hmm. going to stop right there and come back in just a okay. minute, take a break. Uh, this is All Things Moore County. Welcome back to um, our second set of All Things More County. We're talking about um, a drug-free Moore County, um, celebrating recovery and understanding addiction. Um, both September and October are, I guess, National Awareness Months amongst 5,000 other topics that we are being bombarded with. So when we have a chance to sit down and talk at length about one topic and kind of stay on message, maybe the, the message will have a better chance of getting across rather than just a, uh, a Facebook blurb or somebody's point of view that they want to put out there before their morning coffee. Do I sound cynical? No. Okay. <laughs> because it is really, it's getting, it's getting bad. Um, we, um, tell me about um, Drug Free More Kenny. How are you um, funded? We get funding from Sand Hills Mental Health, Sand Hills Center. Um, that's part of their prevention money. Okay. And um, it's not a lot. It's a little tiny amount, but that's okay. I work part-time, 20 hours a week, and I'm a one-person office. And uh, the county does give us office space, which is awesome, which is glad we have that. And um, I do have, I have gotten some grants. We had some United Way funding last year, and this year we got a grant from Moore County Community Foundation to fund a program called The Elephant in the Room, which will be doing training for counselors and teachers um, to help them provide support to students who are dealing with addiction in their home. So it's not just the children um, that we have to watch out using uh, abusing mm -hmm. substances, it could be their parents. So, so Ruben, I have to ask you a question. Do you see a pattern where if it's um, a, a chemical imbalance, it can be genetic, it can be hereditary? Yeah, that's definitely, I believe, that it's hereditary. I had an opportunity to go, I had an opportunity to go to a, a school in Carthage called Pickney, I believe. Yeah. And 
you know, a lot of those uh, the children or the students are labeled as bad children, and I had the opportunity to talk to them, and one of the, uh, when, when they felt comfortable, I asked them to raise their hand, and, and they talked about, like, living in a home where they, not only do they abuse drugs, but their parents do as well. And so, and when they raised their hand, you saw, and this probably out of 75 people, a large percentage of those raised their hand. So you can see that there is a genetic component. Sometimes people refuse to believe that, but and when I do groups sometimes with uh, adolescents in my previous job, they say, I don't believe in it, uh, that theory, the hereditary, and all that crap. Right. But then I ask them, do you have a parent or a grandparent? And they say, definitely, He's yes. from New York. He can use the word crap. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, Karen, it's okay. He, he, he didn't, could be worse, but I'm glad. He did not offend me at all. I can, he's not me either. He was making a point. Right. But yes, it is crap. He's just following our presidential candidates right. and what they say. <laughs> Any, anything can go. Right. So it. there's... It, 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 there definitely is a genetic component. There's other factors, but I believe definitely, yeah. So when you say drug abuse, are you talking about um, medicine? Are you talking about cocaine, heroin? Because um, when people hear drug abuse, what do they think of? I think all the time when we hear the uh, word drug abuse, they might think of alcohol or whatever. Uh, but I don't think they we're use... We're talk they, about alcohol. Yeah, the DSM-5, the DSM-4 classified like substance abuse, dependence. Now what they do with DSM-5 diagnosis, they change that. Now it's known as substance use disorder, but then you look at different factors like uh, criteria for mild, moderate, or severe. So they don't use those. And it's hard for me because all my career I've been using substance abuse dependence, but they no longer use that those terms. So most people when they hear substance abuse, they put alcohol in there with the... Right, I, I believe so as well. And uh, I, I hear even us counsel sometimes use the word, and we have to change our concepts, use the word like abuse interchangeably. And what does abuse mean? Well, we have... Um, we have uh, two gentlemen, um, Dan and Jeff, sitting with us um, to talk a little bit about um, alcohol and AA. But since alcohol is so socially accepted, don't you think it becomes, um, it's not as, it's not vilified as much as some of the harder drugs, that it's okay because it's alcohol. You know, have a doers, have a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, d d exactly. This is Dan. Um, hey, Dan. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Good to see you. No, I think alcohol uh, is sensationalized. It's glamorized. It's commercialized to right. you. Right. Um, especially when we get towards, we're getting towards the holidays, that time mm -hmm. of year. Um, and even in, um, even in uh, Hollywood, it's something that's uh, mm -hmm. almost, um, mm -hmm. the word I'm looking for is, is uh, you're almost a, a it's elevated, celebrity it's status. Glor yeah, right. Exactly. Have a Marlboro and have mm -hmm. a have a mm -hmm. great <laughs> glass of scotch, <laughs> right? The Marlboro <laughs> man, <laughs> right. Or, the, you know, the Bud Light commercials with the cheerleaders. You know, mm. that's not happening in someone's home. Mm. Um, right. Well, at least not in mine. Right. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't know if Jeff has anything to add on. Well, one of the definitions of success is owning a winery and uh, right. having a uh, having a little bit of a history in the wine business. Um, you know, uh, it's a lot of people can drink wine and enjoy a glass or two. Um, unfortunately, that had not been my experience, but. Uh, everybody's different. So. And, and again, I go back to the articles posted on Facebook. Wine is good for your heart. Wine does this. Wine does that. And if you only had a glass a day, uh, can, you know, mix signals all the time. Mix messages. My type of thinking was, you know, if two glasses are good, then two bottles are better. So uh, <laughs> I, I went a little over the top on that one. <laughs> but but alcohol is a um, um, uh, is it a more difficult addiction because it's so socially acceptable that you can spend so much time with it before you realize it's a problem as opposed to opiates or opposed to harder drugs? Uh, it, that's that, a great question, Bill. I um, I don't have a background. My Primarily my background was with alcohol, so I can't speak to other substances personally. Right. Um, I, I did find it to be socially acceptable. I started in high school um, going to football games on Friday night, sure. and mostly everyone else that I was with was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so ultimately, I guess peer pressure-wise, it was uh, um, just a normal uh, social lubricant for um, where I was that age. 
um, it obviously progressed as I got older, mm -hmm. but um, um, I think it was easy to fall into that uh, for sure. Was there a history of that in your family? I yes, I do have uh, history with um, family members that, that drank pretty heavily. So n now where you are and where you've evolved to, is it your understanding that it started as a just a habit, but that it was a, a chemical imbalance that it wasn't? If I'm saying this right, it, you couldn't help yourself. Uh, yes, um, you know, our, Ruben did a great job describing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess the the concept behind is it, you know, moral issue is it the chemical imbalance? Our book describes it as um, it's as a disease. Mm -hmm. um, there's a mental obsession. Mm -hmm. There's a phenomenon of craving. I've experienced all that. Um, our book also describes it as spiritual malady, which I believe I had all those. <laughs> so um, it's a little. I guess a layered, layered topic. Yeah, and as a as a as an AA plug, I I'd say that you can get wrapped up in a lot of whys and a lot of what ifs, mm -hmm. um, which you know is not a bad thing if you want to try to figure out why you are an alcoholic or a drug addict, drug addict. Excuse me, more power. Um, I think what AA teaches you is that it's not about why or what you did or any of the other stuff that happened. It's about what are you going to do today and what are you going to do tomorrow to get better. Um, in between the lines, Karen, of what they're saying, yeah. um, people who are in AA, um, they prosper when they're, they're in an environment of support right. by one another. In their recovery, right. um, it, it it seems more obvious um, with uh, someone who is an alcoholic. Because once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic, mm -hmm. right? Whether <laughs> yes, you're sir. whether you're drinking or not. <laughs> Correct. <clears throat> but the support is such a key element to right. progress. Same on um, the the drug mm -hmm. side. Right. And and a lot of treatment specialists and Ruben, on the you might can speak to that, but. Um, recommend that when someone's gone through a, a, a 30-day, 90-day year program or whatever for treatment that uh, they encourage them to, to attend AA right. and go to the 12-step program. 12-step program's been here a long time and it works. And, um, and it works in business mm -hmm. and it works, it, <laughs> it has nothing to do just specifically with alcohol. Right. That 12-step right. program is a, um, a great um, a example place. for yeah. any mm -hmm. kind of yeah. endeavor. Right. A, a good life right. book, yeah. Right. Um, but definitely, I, I think it's, it's a journey. Yeah. Going through recovery is a journey. And sometimes people have to go through treatment two or three times to find the treatment that works for them, for their particular imbalance for their, you know, wherever their family situation is. I mean, it's just not, it's just like cancer, you know, when you have that cocktail for um, your um, treatment, mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's based on what their chemical background, uh, chemistry is made up of. And same way with uh, treatment for um, addiction and substance use disorder and also the availability because mm -hmm. most of our treatment uh, programs in Moore County or in the lower end of the county. Mm -hmm. And this is a large geographical county. Mm -hmm. So people in Robbins have a hard time, especially if they don't have transportation uh, because they lost their license or whatever, uh, or a family member won't bring them, can't get to treatment, plus sometimes the cost. So right. there's, there's a lot of barriers to just getting to that. And, and, and well, I'll go into this too. There's, there's not an opiate detox in Moore County. At the hospital, you can go to the hospital and get detox for alcohol and benzos, benzos or Xanax, and but not for opiates. And opiates is our second right. most abused drug. Right. So they either are have to go home and suffer it out themselves, or a lot of times they'll go to jail to detox. A lot of times they'll just say heck with it and keep on going. Or they come to a medic, like our program, right. Medicaid, right? Medication assistant treatment program. So. What we do, we have a comprehensive treatment program. We have, uh, when a person comes in from day one, it used to be uh, appointments, but now we have walk-ins on Wednesdays and Fridays. And from between six and nine, a person walks in, literally, uh, they uh, talk to the clerical staff and they assign a counselor who does an assessment to determine if the person's appropriate for that level of care, our level of care 
once they're deemed appropriate, then uh, we, we meet with them uh, through the intake, and then uh, they meet with the medical staff and the doc medical director. And uh, from that point on, they are provided the appropriate dose of medication once they're deemed appropriate. So we treat it with medication, try to stabilize the patient, you know. And there's a stigma, unfortunately. I know when people think of methadone program, yeah, I know right. there's a stigma. And I've had parents to come in and say, wow, I didn't know this was such a great program. They thought there was some hole in the wall, a dingy, dark, gloomy <laughs> place. So they come to our place and see that it's bright and we have trained counselors and staff. And uh, it's, like I said, it's a comprehensive program. And it's a program, too, right. that people can detox gradually right. and continue to work or mm -hmm. go to school. And that's one of the benefits of it, too. Right. It's monitored. Mm -hmm. There are doctors that will prescribe Suboxone or whatever mm -hmm. that it's not monitored and not you're not offered counseling. Right. So, again, you have to be careful how you choose these different right. treatment programs right. and what works best for you. Not always cold turkey. Right. Right. Um, the, the, uh, we're we're going to run out of time in this set, but I want to talk about, because when you mentioned, Ruben, that people just come in on their own, that must mm -hmm. take a lot of courage for them to yes, walk through that door. Yes, it does take a lot of courage. Yes, that ambivalence right. on their part. Right. right. So they're, that's half the battle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but getting to that point, um, who knows what happened prior to them getting there. Right. Um, a lot of people talk about misdiagnoses on a lot of different issues. Um, and people are in denial, aren't they? Yes. You have to deal with that. We're going to come back in the third set. Um, this is All Things More County. We're talking about uh, celebrating recovery and understanding addiction in More County. Um, we'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things More County. Um, talking about no, you don't have to stop talking just because we came back on the air. Um, we're talking about addiction, understanding it, celebrating the recovery. Um, and during the break, there was a bunch of conversation going on at the table. And Dan, I didn't realize that um, you participate with Karen. I mean, you guys do a lot of uh, cross work together. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, Bill. So we um, have some different uh, committees within our home group. Jeff and I are um, with an AA group here in uh, Southern Pines. We okay. meet over at the First Baptist Church uh, Mondays and, and Thursdays at 7 o'clock. But right. um, we work on our specifically on our cooperation with professionals in the community committee. That's kind of our um, thing that we're, we're ingrained in. And primarily our message is to get um, AA out to professionals such as folks in the legal world, uh, medical world, mm -hmm. other non-alcoholics because they're – far likelier to run into someone with a problem than we are mm -hmm. and um, a lot of times they are the folks referring us people who show up at an AA meeting right um, so we have some outreach uh, based around that uh, that same effort do you have to coach people to who are on the lookout for family friends or relatives that it's not a weakness that they're um, they're finding but it's it's something that is physiologically um, physiologically based it's not just a, a character flaw or a weakness well I think um, and I'll let Jeff answer this too but we we try and as much as we can we try to uh, meet directly with the person affected not that we won't minister to a family if, if, okay. if need be okay. um, but yes I think there's a lot of misconception about um, around the, the disease concept uh -huh. and, and really what the family members or those affected are up against. Uh -huh. um, not having an understanding of, of the background, um, not being able to identify as someone with substance abuse or alcohol history. Mm -hmm. Definitely, um, uh, uh, it's kind of a foreign, I guess, foreign concept. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd say, um, you know, the program got me before I got the program because... <laughs> I'm not sure when I walked into what I walked into, which was meetings and IOP at the time, 
uh, I was 100% sure that I was an alcoholic. Um, but I did have seemingly the willingness uh, to stick around and listen. Um, and I heard some things from people that perhaps I normally wouldn't associate with that right. were very relevant to my own life. Right. Uh, and I think that identification process is very important mm -hmm. uh, in the in the recovery process. In that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you we're all humans. We all <laughs> have our own exactly. ups and downs and flaws and strange things that go on in our lives. So uh, to understand that there are other people who are going through what you are going through was was and is for me hugely important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So coaching and mentoring is a, a big part of getting mm -hmm. people enrolled. Um, do you do, um, is, a takeoff on that is, do you speak to um, middle schoolers? Um, those are those formative years for kids where they start to form habits and, you know, their personalities mm -hmm. are starting. They put their foot down and they basically are starting to tell their folks, you know, this is what yeah. I'm all about. Puberty's uh, kind of coming, coming through at that time. Mm -hmm. I do some um, displays and things for for youth, but really the approach we've been taking for the last couple of years is trying to reach the parents right. of those middle schoolers. Right. Um, we have a project called the Soda Project where we go out. With, it kind of stemmed from a program that we had brought in called the Bedroom Project where uh, a lady came in and did a mock bedroom and uh, this particular lady had lost a, a daughter to overdose. She had been a cheerleader and had, you know, was in the right group and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so she gave her testimony as well as she set a, up a mock bedroom and parents were in, uh, encouraged to come up and try to find the drugs. And uh, mm -hmm. that was a very powerful program, but we found out she was very expensive, so since we had our limited budget, we kind of created our own project called the Soda Project, and we kind of did the same thing. We partner with law enforcement and with the uh, school resource officers, and we provide information to parents on what drugs are out there, what's what's the end drug, um, what to look for, um, maybe some questions to ask. And also that it's their right as a parent to look at their child's phone. It's their right as a parent to go in their child's bedroom mm -hmm. um, and, and how to set those limits and those expectations. And so um, this is a program that all I got to do is contact Drug Free Moore County and we'll, you know, we'll be glad to, if they've got a group of adults or parents, we'll come out and do it. Um, right now, I think um, Farm Life is getting ready to um, put together something that will be inviting parents from New Century and um, okay. Union Pines to come to. But yes, if you can get a group of adults, even if they're adults at a workplace, uh, we'll come out and do the presentation. I got a, uh, a question as you were speaking. Um, okay. I know a mom okay. who has um, a child, um, I think freshman. Mm -hmm. Uh, 15 years old and um, a lot of recreational um, smoking and you know acting out and doing so the mom is in a tizzy single mom mm -hmm. no, no support system yeah here's what she's done one no driver's license no permit can't drive <laughs> Two, take the phone away you mentioned the phone that's right. what made me think about it as in other words be responsible or there are going to be consequences mm -hmm. So, you tell a 15-year-old boy you're going to do that, and a 15-year-old boy is going to, like, fight back and is going to be, you know, is going to double down yeah. pretty much. Uh, tough age. What do you, what and do it's, you it's a tough. It's, it's a tough. That's a tough question. Um, you know, we can, we can raise our kids. In the to the best of our ability and build that foundation mm -hmm. but like you said when they hit puberty you know all bets are out mm -hmm. you know but as parents we have to continue to try and I think too that that awareness of what marijuana is how it affects your body and helping that student or that that son um, maybe you know, we one at one point we had a um, um, where we invited parents to come into the jail 
and they were actually saw uh, an mm -hmm. 18-year-old on his birthday mm -hmm. be processed. And so we took the parents back to the classroom and said, okay, what are you going to do That's to make powerful. sure your son is like, it's like a scared straight for parents. Mm -hmm. um, that was when the old jail, uh, the, I don't know if we could do that in the new one now, but, um, you know, I think, I think as parents, it's, it's harder because it's so available. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the information that the middle schoolers or the high schoolers are getting are, it's okay. So I think, again, there's so many factors. So there's one thing I didn't throw in that I should, Ruben. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> in this particular situation, in the family, there is a history of uh, chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, other relatives mm -hmm. and um, there it were issues within the family that I think the, the mom is probably over worrying with good reason because sometimes patterns of the kids um, repeat the patterns of the the parents right. the way they're right. mm -hmm. so I think that sort of has increased her awareness or her worriness uh, what do you tell them? Well, I think uh, that's a testament that we all we say that it is a family disease that we talk about the disease concept of addiction, but we know there's a family disease that right. it impacts the entire family. And I would say to educate uh, the family members, uh, to my 12 step programs, have family members go like Al Anon. Mm -hmm. We encourage that, Nar Anon, to go to those programs so they can learn how to what, I don't know, deal with the addiction. Uh, to help themselves because oftentimes family members meaning well they become enablers and so there's roles that family members take on like okay the mother might so well, I can fix this situation so they become the fixer or enabler mm -hmm. uh, another family member becomes the scapegoat because imagine growing up in that family system mm -hmm. and you're going to school and you're acting out and they, they label you as a bad child mm -hmm. when actually you are acting out because of what's going on at home so there's a lot of dynamics to that whole. So that's why we try to treat the entire family. Where I work at, we encourage family members to come in. I have a mm -hmm. family group like that meets on Thursdays, like at, at our clinic at five o'clock. That just to uh, encourage the family members to recognize that it's not about fixing that person. It's about not fixing, but like educating the entire family and working with the entire family. Yeah. Where um, where is your treatment center? It's located at 20 Page Drive. It's uh, Suite 7 and 8 mm -hmm. in Pinehurst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've been there for how long? I've been there for, oh, be five years this upcoming March. Yeah. yeah. Um, are, are you at all discouraged? Um, you said at the beginning of the show, <laughs> Karen, that um, the problem is growing. But then I guess I would say to you, but if you weren't here, where would the problem be today? Um, if it's something that is mushrooming, even though it might be growing without any sort of um, stopgap system in place, it could be much bigger than it is. It could, it could, and 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 I'm I'm encouraged in the fact that I'm seeing a trend that we're seeing more and more. Uh, legislation. We're seeing more community recovery centers. We're seeing more people step up. Um, you know, it's encouraging to hear that AA is working with the hospital. They're work now uh, working with uh, the Moore County Detention Center, and they work with with the Pinehurst uh, Comprehensive Treatment Center. Mm -hmm. um, I think Drug Free Moore County, when it first started, basically just you know did programs, prevention programs in the schools and thought, okay, there, mm -hmm. you know, we'll just, we'll just prevent it. Mm -hmm. But we have to do a multi-approach of, a multi-prong approach, I guess, of mm -hmm. prevention, treatment, and recovery, and, and promote all of that. And then also connect those folks like uh, AA and, and all the treatment centers and, and work together as a community and then also help other community leaders uh -huh. and law enforcement. Law enforcement, I think it's 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 changing how they're dealing with um, the prosecution of folks that do have substance abuse. I know right now, um, I, I'm I think uh, Drug Free Moore County right now is the only one uh, organization that is going into the Moore County Detention Center, and we do a women's recovery group every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. 
and it's voluntary and the ladies come in and we've had up to 20 ladies in our group at a time and they're in there for different charges and but when asked I asked you know how many of you you know do have a substance have had or, or have mm-hmm. a substance use um, you know condition or order and they 100% I mean and these are folks that will get back out and are raising their children. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is trying to do, you know, uh, approach with them, helping get them ready so when they do get out, hopefully they'll go into treatment. And Drug Free Moore County, you know, again, has information. We can't refer them to a program. But we also, there is a diversion program within law enforcement as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it's coming. It's slow. It's coming. Um, I'm encouraged, but then again, we still have doctors over prescribing, you know, we still mm-hmm. have heroin mm-hmm. coming in, which mm-hmm. is cheaper once, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. there's other factors. It's. I had it's somebody, crazy. I had somebody, a student say to me the other day, you know, school's back in session, and now it's really easy <laughs> to get marijuana. <laughs> Think, you know, in yeah. the summer it's kind of well, hard, especially school, if, you don't, yeah. if you don't drive. Mm-hmm. Now you're at school and you're in an environment where, oh, you can get it anywhere. Yeah. It's, 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 it's rampant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got to believe... Um, that these cell phones and the way people get information, these are like electronic report cards about your self-esteem. And there's so much quick information, uh, feedback about yourselves. And Dan Mm -hmm. brought up a point before. He said he started drinking when he was in high school in the stands. Well, I'm going to (laughs) guess that he did it because it was cool. And for whatever reason, that's how he made himself fit in. So there's a social aspect to mm-hmm. uh, addiction, right? Mm-hmm. Initially, yes. Initially. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and the social aspect is, I think you're up against a juggernaut mm-hmm. when you're up against the information age we live in and how quickly stuff gets around. Right. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, it's daunting. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So when people come in to see you, you tell them to pull their cell phones. Don't bring them yeah. in the room, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> eyeball, eyeball to eyeball. Yeah. yeah. Well, in school now, I was surprised. I went to visit. They have a um, a sad group, which now is called Students Against Destructive Decisions. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, um, drunk driving anymore, which could be texting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I was shocked. But the kids walking around with their cell phones. I said, "Oh, you don't make them put them up anymore." And they said, "They, yeah. they lost that battle." Mm-hmm. You know. So I, I keep going back to the twelve-step program. Yeah. Uh, t- twelve-step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a it's a great blueprint for success. Yes. Mm-hmm. In anything that you do, um, we should have kids just scotch tape it to their forehead. <laughs> uh, put it on the phone as their face page saver. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Drug Free Moore County. The best place to access the information, Karen, is on your Facebook page. Yes. Okay, yes. and um, we will post information, um, Ruben, where people can get in touch with you, mm-hmm. um, access drug-free um, Moore County. Um, Dan and Jeff, thanks so much for coming and talking with us. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Just talking about it, making, keeping mm-hmm. it in mm-hmm. people's forefront is a big deal, so I appreciate you all coming in. Um, we appreciate you well, helping to promote this effort and mm-hmm. awareness and, and helping us to to reach out to folks. Maybe, you know, our, our motto kind of is, you know, one person at a time. If we yeah. can reach one right. person. Put you your know. blinders on and do yeah. the best you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Karen Wicker, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bill. Reuben Bernie, thank you. Thanks for having me. Again, Jeff, thank you. And Dan, thank you. Thank this you. is all things Moore County. <laughs> Nothing ever slows her down.